In 2018, 78% of companies in the UK who submitted their figures paid men more than women. It's been a century since women got the vote, accomplished by the suffragette movement. 2018 marks the time of reflection of how far women in society have come and the challenges they still face. When you hear the words role model, who comes to mind? Oh, I suppose um, people like um, Nelson Mandela, David Attenborough. A female role model? Oh, my mother, I guess. Ah, yeah, my, my girlfriend. My biggest role models, if I'm honest, would be different male leaders. Um, it's difficult to think of women who are so um, famous, really. Our society has created a false image surrounding powerful women, that they are cold and bossy. This documentary will explore what powerful women are really like, who they really are, and how they overcame their obstacles. We visited Camden Council headquarters to meet its leader, Georgia Gould. What does an average day at work involve for you? So I could go from meeting a group of young people about knife violence to meeting the head of a hospital trust to talking to one of the big employers in Camden. So a real mix of things, but some of my main roles are I lead this council which runs a lot of services, so I spend a lot of time looking at policies and decision making in this building, meeting different community groups, mums, young people, older people's groups, carers, and trying to understand what are the challenges in the borough. I spend a lot of time on politics, I go to a lot of Labour Party meetings, work with my party and other councillors. Do you feel any pressure surrounding the fact that you're a relatively young female council leader? I don't know if I feel pressure myself, but I definitely um, sometimes get a look of surprise um, or, or, or even sometimes slight horror from certain people. And I think that I don't necessarily look like the kind of traditional image of a, a council leader. I think that average age of a councillor is 60 and of councillors around the country, only 33% are women and only 17% of council leaders are women. Um, and we see um, you know, similar figures in Parliament. So politics still remains, unfortunately, too much of a male-dominated um, space. Have you ever like doubted yourself because of your gender or sort of been made to feel a bit inferior? There are some environments that I walk into where I'm the only woman or one of two women. I'm in a big room full of men. Something in my head will say, draw back, don't put yourself forward. And, and it's like, it goes against everything intellectually, I believe, but that really happens. So when in that kind of environment, I always like really give myself a shove and say, okay, you have to speak first. There's sometimes a culture where women who put themselves forward, who are ambitious, who are outspoken, are kind of seen as pushy or judged for that. So it's not just incumbent on women to put themselves forward, but also for our culture to kind of embrace that. What sort of advice would you give to other women or like young women who want to get into politics? I think my advice would be to be really confident in the difference that you bring. We see a kind of certain model of politics often kind of on the television. It can be quite, quite confrontational. Um, it, politicians can seem like a homogenous group. And I think to be really confident that if you bring a different perspective, different ideas, a lived experience, that, that is really important. Regardless of politics, seeing as Theresa May is also a woman who's in power, what are your opinions on her? I completely disagree with Theresa May's politics, but I also watch some of the, the commentary around her, the constant focus on her clothes, on the way that she walks. So I think that we can all call out the way that some of the media talk about female politicians. And I definitely think that some of the questions people have around leadership styles of women, they wouldn't ask the same questions of men. Um, yeah, I completely agree, because I think when David Cameron was Prime Minister as well, he was in a similar position, like he sort of led us into Brexit indirectly, and he didn't get any of the same backlash she had. You see, this is why we need more female interviewers as well, you know? You were wonderful. <laughs> There are many different types of power. We interviewed a Reverend Rose Hassan Wilkin about her thoughts. For me, ministry is all about people. I am responsible for a congregation, so I care for them. I take services for them. Now, I have another particular role as a priest at the moment, and that is as chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons. It's a very historic role, 
and it's been in existence for over 300 years. I am the first woman in that role and the 79th chaplain. Every day when Parliament sits, I am the first thing on their agenda. I'm also a chaplain to Her Majesty the Queen. Why do you think that it's important that a woman is in the role that you have and carries out your jobs? I come from the perspective that the world belongs to God. And if the world belongs to God, and God is a part of the world, then I am in the world. I also believe that I carry out my function as Rose in a very Caribbean, Jamaican way, because that's who I am. Not trying to do it like the way a guy did it, but doing it my way, as God would have me do it. Working in an environment which is often dominated by men, um, what advice would you give to females that are kind of finding that difficult? I think it is important that women feel themselves into that role, that they walk purposefully, not just as a woman, but as a black woman. I think doubly, I have to be good at and not just good, I have to be excellent at everything that I do. I really feel that. Um, because I don't want to let the side down. I don't want to let you know, women down. I don't want to let black people down. And the thing is, if a man gets it wrong, nobody says, oh, we'd better not have another man. But if a woman gets it wrong, if a black person gets something wrong, oh, we had a black person and she wasn't so good, so we won't have another one. Or, you know, we had a woman and she wasn't great, so let's not have a woman again. You know, so there are real challenges. What kind of impacts do you think that you've had in your community and in the wider world in general? I've been very lucky. I go all over the country speaking, preaching. So I get to reach so many different people. And the feedback is always very positive about the impact that that has made. I also had a young woman who turned up at my church. She wanted to talk to me and she just cried and cried and cried. And I couldn't stop her. Eventually she stopped. And she said, I just had to come and find you. Because last week I was having such a terrible time in my life. I thought, what's the point of living? And then you came on the television and you changed my life. When she said that, I burst out crying. I said to her, I only said to my husband this morning, I, I won't do any more of these programs. And then you tell me that it's made a difference in your life, so I have to continue doing it. I would like to think that I'd make an impact on people's lives by walking alongside them. How hard is it for women to rise to power in the business world? We spoke to tech entrepreneur Tarika Marshall. I think I've wanted to be an entrepreneur probably since I was about nine when I set up my own lending library with my books in my room and managed to get the whole neighbourhood um, charged. How has being the company director affected your life and what has it taught you? It's taught me that you can achieve um, anything that you set out to do. I think being your own boss and actually setting up something that you can create and build yourself is incredibly empowering. I've, for the past 15 years, been in tech, mobile, automobile, and whilst it has been noticeably more male-dominated, I think I've been very lucky where I've had um, leaders or bosses um, and peers that I've been able to rely on, help grow me and to help me lead. I've had uh, situations where I've led tech teams, which have been predominantly male, and that's always been that initial kind of confusion as to having a female tech boss. But I think... The thing, probably the biggest takeaway was actually learning as long as you can hold your own in any kind of conversation around the area that you're working in and not to play to gender stereotypes. So not necessarily having to be the Jack the Lad, but also not having to you know, be too girly or too whatever, just being confident in yourself. Um, and I think then your work shines through. How do you feel about the representation of females in the tech industry? If you'd asked me that question 15 years ago, I would have uh, said you know, that, that was quite a weak representation. Um, I think it's been incredible what's been achieved over that time. 
so there's definitely way more um, of a sort of uh, that feeling of you know we will achieve balance. Uh, I think the support in education around STEM has been fantastic as well. So you're now getting a lot more coders. And I think as long as companies put that um, as you know part of their diversity criteria um, in hiring, then that's going to um, pave the way. How do you juggle being a mother and being a company director? It's definitely not a walk in the park. I think um, it takes a lot of planning and time management. And it's wonderful to be able to do both. Um, I think I'm able to because I've got a, a supportive husband. So we share a lot of the childcare. Being around my kids is really important as well. Um, and so things like holiday time um, is really carved out. Achieving that sort of work-life balance, I think that's been my, the thing I set out to do most in my career. What motivated you to create an app to help young people to regulate screen time and why do you think this is an important issue? Ben, my co-founder and myself, have seen sort of firsthand uh, our young kids growing up, sort of around the sort of seven, eight years old age. And while they've been very protected with iPads and um, monitoring uh, in, in one sense, um, they're now embarking very quickly into sort of digital independence. And what you're seeing more and more is that slightly slippery slope into not being able to have any guidance online um, and not being able to know when is the right time to sort of maybe have a bit of a balanced approach and maybe switch off or take a bit of time out. And so we built Gooseby, which was to be your own digital buddy that helps guide you around safer, healthier digital habits. Rather than building the technology and helping entice people, now um, trying to see whether I can um, empower people uh, and do good with technology. The media has power and influence over the way we view the world. We met with journalist and producer Josie Verghese. I was always interested in media. I grew up watching telly, listening to radio, and when I joined Newsround, um, I was a production secretary, but I ended up doing a number of different roles which involved making programmes, and that's where I did my journalism training. And was it more difficult to enter your sector of work because you, you are a woman? Because I began my production career at CBBC and with BBC Children's, actually quite a high proportion um, of the people involved were women. So I think we were probably quite an unusual department. Um, it's different in the news, and certainly when I look around the newsroom, I think there are definitely more men still than women, and certainly more senior roles. But I think things are changing, um, and women have absolutely got a voice in the newsroom, and we're using it. What does your current job consist of? I specifically work with young people, so I'm there to help provide support and media literacy to engage young people in news and current affairs and help them understand it. But more importantly, and the bit that is unique in my job is actually about empowering young people to do the journalism themselves. So supporting young people to tell their own stories and helping them do it in creative and authentic ways and actually not just copying what they might see on television or social media in terms of adult reporters. Actually, do it the way you want to do it and for an audience that you think should hear it. What obstacles do you face to get where you are? I think anyone working in media has to be really persistent. You have to be willing to take knockbacks. It's highly competitive. You've got to be someone that's willing to kind of ask questions and knock on doors. And that can be really demoralising if you don't feel that you're getting the responses you want to hear. So I think resilience is really important. Did I have any personal barriers? I guess I have to think about as a wheelchair user, actually there can be physical barriers, certainly I haven't chosen to go and be an intrepid reporter or cameraman or camerawoman, should I say, that is travelling all over the world and climbing up mountains, but my career has evolved to suit me. What do you think of the representation of women in the media? When I was your age, I don't really remember female reporters. Even on Newsround, my time it was John Craven, it was all men. So I think that's changed, but I think we can still see more women, uh, not just on news, but in all our programming. And diversity on all levels, disability and race and age. And um, something that I'm really passionate is also making sure that um, in all forms of broadcasting, but particularly news, we don't just hear from people in London or in people in, in the North West because that's where our, our main newsrooms are. We all want role models, so if you don't see people like you on television, on social media, on the radio, in newspapers, online, how can you find your own place? Um, who are your role models? Earlier this year, I went on um, the procession march 
uh, which was to celebrate or to mark the centenary of women um, getting the vote. So I made this um, banner, I guess, um, with some of the women that inspire me. Some of them are personal. My gran sliding down a slide in her 80s, and some of them are familiar faces. Michelle Obama, Eleanor Roosevelt, American women that have spoken up as first ladies. Malala Yousafzai, who spoke up as a teenager about why education matters to her and why everyone should have the right to it. I think what's common amongst all the women that particularly inspire me is that they've got a voice and they've made sure that they articulate what they think and share that with other people. Um, but also that they have used their skills to support other women particularly to do that. What are your thoughts on the women you met this week? Um, they were truly inspirational. They were all different in their own way and um, they all had a powerful message to say about women in power. My perspective has always been that women should be in power. Women should have a stake in high level positions and have a say in what goes down. I kind of respect women in power because they have the guts to actually go for what they want and not really care about what other people think. I think it was really inspiring seeing so many women from different walks of life. I feel motivated from what they've had to say to me. They've all been saying that as long as you're confident and you believe that you can do it and you know that that's what you want, that that's all you need really.